We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation. From east to west and north to south, we bring you the word of His glory. Today we is February 26, uh, 2017, the year of Jubilee, 5,777 of the Lord. And um, this again is the year of the sword, uh, the, the, the 50th Jubilee year of the Lord. So it's uh, lots of uh, incredible things happening in the Jubilee year, as we've mentioned uh, in times past. Um, so we're going to get into the Bible prophecies this week, things that have happened just this week in the name of the Lord, uh, according to the Scripture. First, we're going to start with Iran. Iran is becoming a central figure in these end times. As we mentioned before, the Iranian uh, Ayatollah has mentioned many times that he's trying to uh, recreate the, the Persian Empire. And by recreating the Persian Empire, he believes that their, uh, head, their, their world headquarters is not Tehran. It is Babylon. They recognize Babylon, which is in, in Iraq, as the headquarters of, the, of the, new, the, uh, the Persian Empire in the end times. Remember, the, the city of Babylon was where uh, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, was headquartered, the Medes and Persians, Alexander the Great. So that is an area that we see in Jeremiah 53 and all through the scriptures that a modern-day Babylon will be reestablished itself. We know in the book of Revelation, Babylon, Babylon, Babylon has fallen. So that's the, the, the place where the Antichrist will be in the end times, and we see that being established. Again, if you go to uh, Google Earth and you type in Babylon, you're going to see it starting to grow. They found the Tower of Babel. They have, uh, uh, under uh, Saddam Hussein, um, they uh, put millions and millions of dollars of excavation to try to rebuild up the, Babel, the area of the city of Babylon, and it's also a county to Babylonia. And uh, they, found the, uh, they found the banquet hall in the book of Daniel where it says, the, with the handwriting on the wall, the American troops were actually housed in that in the, uh, the Persian Gulf crisis. So Iran is, is doing this. They're fighting through the proxies of uh, Hezbollah uh, the, 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 um, and Yemen, the, the Houthis. They're backing the Houthis, and they're also backing Hamas. So uh, the Ayatollah made a... Um, a major speech this week, and he said death to Israel and death to the United States, that they're chanting death to America in the streets. Again, it was our American uh, uh, last president who gave them back billions of dollars, and they're using that to funnel terrorism again, and uh, you, don't change, uh, you don't change your colors. Uh, and they're, they're, they're promoting war uh, with Hamas and, and uh, Hezbollah. They're, they're, they're encouraging the, the Hamas jihadists and the Hezbollah jihadists to go to war against, uh, go to war against Israel, take the war to the, the, the jihadists, the infidel. And he's outwardly said that several times this week in, uh, uh, um, in messages. And he even quoted saying, it's good for the Muslims to die in unproportional numbers for the good of the jihadists against Israel. So he's saying, go ahead, Muslims, go ahead and be martyred. It's good that Israel will uh, take more of us than them, but the, the ultimate cause and destruction of Israel is, is greater. And that's not what the God of uh, Elohim says. Our God is a God of love. So you, you ever notice that uh, in these wars, you, you see back into American history and you see some of the great battles like George Washington and Patton and some of the great generals, they would always lead their troops into battle. King David. One of the, the reason that it went well with uh, King David and his wars, when he sought the face of the Lord, it went well with him. And David would go into battle. It was, it was, it was part of the kingship to go into battle with your, with your soldiers. We don't see the Ayatollah ever going out in the middle of these battles. We don't see Imams going out to take these battles. They're taking the, the, you know, the, 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 the pawns to, to go out and fight these battles. And uh, that is something that should raise our, uh, our, our, our red flag. If that is truly what is, is, is called by, why aren't the imams in the, in the Ayatollah going out to battle? They're just telling other peoples to go out and die in the name of this, this, this fight against Israel. So we know it's going to happen. We know Psalm 83 is on the doorstep. Again, this week, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the defense minister met with uh, Mathis of, of the United States to talk about uh, their biggest problems. And what he said, our three biggest problems in the nation of Israel are Iran, Iran, and Iran. So he made that abundantly clear. He knows that Hezbollah is t starting to take their eye off Syria because they've been bogged down in the Syrian civil war. Hezbollah is regrouping. Even the head of the Lebanese government has called for jihadists against Israel and recognizing uh, the, uh, Hezbollah, which is a terrorist state, 
recognized as terrorists by the United Nations, and they're preparing rockets and preparing to go to battle. It's not if, according to all parties, it is now an imminent war. And uh, the, 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 prime, the, the uh, uh, defense minister, uh, Lieberman of Israel, has said, we are not going to do it like we did in 2006. We're going to take overwhelming force on this next one. We are not going to play nice. It will be a battle because the existence of Israel is uh, in, in, in place. Fall, falling right into uh, uh, Psalm 83. The Ayatollah is also telling Hamas to take the same approach in the West Bank and Gaza for uh, the Palestinian area. Go into jihadists. Go into battle. Encouraging to come to battle because the Ayatollah is getting really nervous uh, because uh, Israel is starting to have talk uh, peace with Egypt and Jordan and Saudi Arabia because they're more concerned about the Shiites than they are uh, about uh, you know Iran becoming a superpower or a regional power in that area than they are about uh, with Israel. You have this ongoing war between the Sunnis and the Shiites. For, for those who uh, are not uh, understanding the Islam relations or, or the religion of Islam or Muslim, why this is important, after the death of Muhammad, there was a split in Islam. Who was rightly the, 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 the bearer of the, 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 the message of Muhammad through um, the Quran? One going to the Shiites, one going through the, um, the the Sunnis. So they didn't they didn't agree, and they've created this this war against each other, and that's quite staggering and different between what Paul tells us in the in the beginning of the church, uh, the Church of Jesus Christ. Remember, Paul talks about in his epistle that there was a there was a division within inside the church, and we're going to talk about the division inside the Catholic Church in a minute as well. But there was a division inside the church, and some were saying, "Well, I was I was baptized by Peter, I was baptized by Silas, I was baptized by Paul." Saying, "Okay, which one of these baptisms did we get baptized in? Silas, Paul, or Peter? Which one do we follow? Who are we to follow?" And Paul says, "It doesn't matter who you're baptized in, whether it's me, uh, Cephas." or Silas, or whoever, as long as they're doing it in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are all united in one church with one spirit and one body. So that's the difference between uh, a relationship and a religion. And so these things are starting to uh, uh, speed up as the end times are taking place. Also, um, an interesting thing that most media did not pick up uh, is that Israel struck Damascus again this week. The city of Damascus, there is a, as we've said many times, there's a weapons depot underneath the city of Damascus that, that carries chemical weapons. And uh, it's not if they'll use them, they will use them. Uh, Assad has used them on his own people. We see ISIS is now shooting missiles from the Sinai and Egypt into Israel. Why are they doing that? Because they want Israel to fire back. So if Israel fires back to ISIS from these launched missiles on the Sinai, they're hoping Egypt will fall in line and start going after Israel. So Israel's really stuck. ISIS is attacking them with these missiles, but for Israel to strike back with a, with a, with a missile attack or, or strike back with an uh, aircraft, they're going into a sovereign nation of Egypt, and, ba- and their issue is not with Egypt, it's the terrorists. So the terrorists are trying to get this all lathered up so that everybody, Sunni or Shiite, turns their battle against the jihad or against the, the, the infidel Jewish people in the state of Israel. So that's what God said in the end days. We're looking at Psalm 83 literally being eminent because Israel, again, under the Samson option, any chemical weapon that hits the area of Israel will, will be a tactical, tactical nuclear weapon. And Israel struck Damascus this week. So uh, again, uh, Damascus or Isaiah 17. And one night before morning, Damascus is no more, right? showing you that it can only be done by a nuclear uh, uh, projectile. It could tie right into Psalm 83. And we see the movement of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Those pieces are falling into place, too, with, with, with um, Magog and Tubal and Meshach, which is Russia, starting to uh, is supplying and getting a, a military base in Syria in Tarsus. And, and, and funding all this. So uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 is, is, is form, forming at the horizon. We talk about t- uh, biological weapons and why would people use them because of craziness. We see that Kim Jong-il uh, Il, uh, of um, uh, North Korea, has, uh, the, the, the Chinese uh, cut him off this week and people are asking, wondering why. 
and this is showing that the Chinese are, are, start, are starting to, uh, to get a little bit more uh, tough with uh, Kim Jong in North Korea because of his missile testing and his, his, uh, his blatant disrespect for the United Nations and his terrorist organization. They had, um, the, the Chinese government had his half-brother protected in the nation of China. And just in, in case that if the, 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 the president of um, North Korea would fall, the Chinese would prop up his half-brother and have their own proxy person to be running North Korea. So that's why they were ke keeping his half-brother. And you probably saw in the news this week that he was killed in a, uh, I believe it was in uh, either an airport or a mall, I don't remember one, which one. But it was a VX nerve toxin, which is, a ban or is banned by the United Nations. So they used a VX toxin in a public place which is really ratcheting up biochemical weapons. That is a severe thing. And the Chinese government made strong um, action afterwards, denouncing that, and I'm sure you have cyber things going on left and right. But China did something very interesting. Uh, they cut off all coal coming into China from North Korea. And North Korea is 35% of their uh, revenue for to keep North Korea going is from coal being shipped to China. And China says, no more. We're not taking your coal. So China is now after this attack starting to take place because North Korea, if China can't keep North Korea in, in place or in check, nobody can. And this is, uh, this is something that has to be dealt with because he's a maniac. Uh, Homeland Security uh, is, is talking again about the biochemical weapons being a very threat. I saw on a uh, Homeland Security um, public website, the CDC supports this, that one of the biggest concerns is biochemical weapons coming into the United States as a, as a weapon that can kill um, millions of people. And one of the interesting ones that they're most fear of is botulism toxin. And I would have, uh, I'm a living example of how to survive botulism toxin. But if that got into our food supply or got into our, our, our nation, it would be absolute havoc. And that is one of the areas that, um, the United States government is most fearful is a botulism toxin being d done throughout the United States into our food source. Um, earthquakes. We're seeing earthquakes continue. There was, a, a, there was continued every day. There was an earthquake last week. Again, uh, there was a, a 17.0. We see in India, the largest volcano has become uh, active again. It hasn't been active in hundreds of years. So again, signs and seasons. Remember, Jesus said, not one of these things, but all of these things happening together are birth pangs, and they're becoming more and more and more. Again, we're talking to you about what has happened just this week. These are all things that have happened just week, this week, and you can see Bible prophecy is being fulfilled very quickly. We talk about dry bones in Ezekiel 37. Israel, there are more people coming to be Christians in, the, in, in Judaism than any time in history. Muslims are seeing visions and, 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 and uh, uh, dreams of Jesus Christ, are coming to Jesus Christ in the, in the thousands, exactly the way the prophet Joel said would happen in the end of the days. And it's all coming through the youth. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. And he's talking about the blood moons. We, said that we saw the two sets of blood moons the last two years. That was a, a pr precursor for the end day things that are, are, are going to happen. Um, continuing to see strange deaths of, of animals and birds and also of um, uh, sea creatures uh, all over the world. And scientists are baffled how these are happening in particular areas. Some say that ties into the Ezekiel uh, 38 prophecy. NASA believes they found a new Earth, and they're talking more about alien contact and sustaining life there. It's just my conjecture that that will be the excuse that the world will use uh, for the harpazo of the church. They're, the world's going to have to explain why there was the church harpazoed. They're not going to say it was because the Bible said so, and they're, they're all were taken up by uh, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through Jesus Christ. They're going to have to come up with a conspiracy theory. And the conspiracy theory that more people are starting to lean towards is alien abduction. So it used to be a, a, a top secret thing when you talked about alien abductions. You, you presidents would never talk about it, but it was Bill Clinton, even uh, as recently as a year ago, talked about his fascination with it and how real uh, it is. Um, the apostasy in the church continues to grow. We mentioned most denominations have denied one or some of the doctrine of the Lord. 
taking man-made doctrine and, ch and changing it for their denominations. That's why you see the population of denominations uh, going back, fading at record amounts. And the non-denominational Holy Spirit Church is growing eight times faster than the regular denominational church because people are saying, you know what, the man is adding these words to it. Not only is this not in the word of God, but this is not even good history because you're not even keeping up what the denomina or what history has taught. And these man-made changes are all happening since the 18th century. It's not what the early Catholics believe. It's not what the early Baptists believe. It's not what the early Methodists believe or the early Lutherans. They're changing it to man, and God has, has, believes, has always told us, you listen to me, not man. That's why the Apostle Paul, as we mentioned in our study in Galatians this week, goes out of his way in the epistles, most of his epistles, but especially the epistles to the, the church of Galatia. I, I, Paul, have been ordained by God the Father and Jesus Christ, not by man or for man. This is Paul who had a Ph.D. in theology from Judaism and studied under Galileo, the leader of the law. So Paul had a dual Ph.D., he had a Ph.D. in philosophy being a Greek, and he had a Ph.D. in theology from Galileo. But what did God do to Paul when the, the road to Damascus? He showed him the vision of the living Christ that he was trying to persecute. And God took Paul and put him in Arabia for three years and said, no, 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 all that man-made teaching that, that was wrong, I'm going to teach you from my spirit, Paul. And Paul didn't go out for three years uh, after he studied under the Holy Spirit for three years in Arabia. And the Lord is telling us. Within the, we mentioned a division that is growing and growing inside the Catholic Church. And this is a good thing. Um, there, division is not necessarily a good thing, but the Lord says, I will divide. I will divide family against family, three verses two. And uh, there will be division because of his namesake. There will be division by standing on the word of God. And the Catholic Church is having more division and more division. And the growing part of the Catholic Church um, are, are saying no more of this Pope, what he's speaking is, is, not, is against what the Word of God is, and he's creating his own man-made theology. And that portion of the Catholic Church is growing faster than the other part by four to one. And that's a very good thing because they're not taking man's word anymore. They say, no, 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 that's not right. And just this week, the Pope came out to address us. He had prepared statements, and this is the words he said. And there's an article that you can find on His Glory website uh, or His Glory Facebook in regards to this. But the Pope said, and again, these are pre these are these are pre made uh, uh, words. So he, he prepared the speech. It's not like he had a slip of the mouth and 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 he slipped. He prepared the, what to say. He's talking about the hypocrites inside the Catholic Church. He said, it is better if you're an atheist and, go to, and not know God at all than it is to be a hypocrite with inside the Catholic Church. So Jesus talked about being hypocrite. We don't want to be a hypocrite. We don't you know, judge people because they sin differently than we do. But that's one thing. We pray for them and we get them back into the body of the church. But to say that it's better for somebody to not know God at all than it is to be a hypocrite... That's a, horrible, uh, that's a horrible comparison, and uh, that is something that we, we, we hope the Pope denounces because, yes, we, we, if we get into to the heaven by the skin of our teeth by the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the most important thing, but deny the Christ, you have everlasting life away from him in the lake of fire. So we pray for those hypocrites inside the Catholic Church that he's talking about if they're truly hypocritical and know the word of God. So that's where the Word of God is coming out. I don't know if he's talking about the ones that are really reading their Bible and saying, no, 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 no. It's you that have made five bad uh, uh, apostate-type things in the last week, uh, Pope. Uh, but the, 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 there is a great division inside the Catholic Church, and we're seeing a outpouring of the Holy Spirit and part of the Catholic Church really starting to grow and say, you know, no more nonsense. We trust the Word of God, not man. Man is... Man is not God. There is one God, and it is in one, his son, Jesus Christ. And he is the only way. He is the way, the truth, truth, and the life. It's not Jesus Christ plus this denomination. It's not Jesus Christ plus Mary. It's not Jesus Christ plus anything. It's Jesus Christ. He is the only way, the way, the truth, and the life, the scripture. He is our high priest, and that is who we have intercessor with. We go right to the, the God of the universe through his son, Jesus Christ. So um, we pray for uh, the, the, the revival. Interesting, well, when we get to the, I'll, I'll skip down to the Jubilee year and the revival. 
Then we'll go back to what's going on in um, archaeology in Israel. Uh, but it was 50 years ago uh, this year. This is the 500th year of the Reformation as well. As, as the, as the uh, uh, rabbis say, coincident is not a kosher word in God's word. Uh, nothing is by accident is what they mean. Everything has a plan. This is, the 50th, this is the 50th year for Jubilee, and it's the 500th year of the Reformation. It happens to be the number 5777. And you know God uses the, the numbers precisely. Three is Trinity, seven is completion, the year of the sword, which is the word of God, and it's his jubilee year in 2017 on the American calendar. So all this is happening uh, for God's purpose in his, his time, in, in, in his uh, releasing of the jubilee. So we go back 50 years to the last jubilee. We mentioned before that's when the, the nations came against Israel. There was no Palestinian state. It was Egypt and uh, Jordan who, own, who owned the land of the eastern Jerusalem, the West Bank and Gaza, and they turned against God's holy people. And, uh, and that, that's what created uh, the, Israel getting the Temple Mount and East Jerusalem in June 6, 1967. That was a jubilee year. Those things always happen, attacks on Israel in jubilee years. And also God releases and gives back to the land as he did there. So something major is going to happen to the land and Israel this year. Also, it was the largest charismatic outpouring of the Holy Spirit since Reformation. And it happened out of a Catholic retreat in Pittsburgh. And it became one of the greatest revivals in uh, hundreds of years uh, inside uh, all, all through America. And it came through uh, the Catholics. Again, uh, w w denom there's nothing wrong with denomination you, as long as you're putting Jesus Christ first and you're not trusting in man. And God's word overrules man every time. So, yes, we pray for the Catholics. We pray for the, the Methodists. We pray for the Baptists. We pray for those denominations who have come out with, the, with doctrine that's against God's precepts and commandments, that the remnant inside those churches say, no, we know the truth of the Lord, and we trust Jesus Christ first and his word over man. That's what we're looking for. And there is revival going on in the, inside the church, specifically the church, uh, the Catholic Church, and that is a good thing. Praise God that He's taking this and, and raising up His remnant, and they're starting to grow in the Jubilee year of the Lord. That's why we're going to see a Holy Ghost revival like we haven't seen this year. It's imminent. It's it's coming, and most likely things start happening on God's uh, holy calendars. So we have the um, we're coming in. This is the last last month of Shavuot. We start into the month of Adar next uh, tomorrow, and uh, then we have the, uh, the, the 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 three festivals on, on the spring for the Lord, our Passover, uh, unleavened bread, and first fruits. God always moves around His calendar, so let's keep an eye on Israel going into those particular times. So the last thing we're going to talk about today is archaeology. Again, the more they dig, the more they prove the Bible uh, true, and uh, they're digging in an area of the Ark of the Covenant. Some rabbis believe they found a copy of the Ark of the Covenant uh, in, in, a, in a cave underneath the Temple Mount, or not in a cave, but behind a, a, a hidden wall uh, in, by um, Hezekiah's tunnel. Uh, they don't know if that was the real one or the, the, the substitute one, uh, but they are digging in the area looking for the Ark of the Covenant, and they just announced again that they're re-digging in the area where they believe Noah's Ark is. They believe they found Noah's vineyard. So again, the more they dig, the more they prove the Bible correct. And amazing things are starting to happen throughout all the world through Bible prophecy coming to life. So why is archaeology important? Because God tells us in the book of Daniel, in the end days, knowledge will go to and fro. And that's not just the knowledge of iPhones and iPads and supercomputers and, and technology. That's part of it. But God is revealing himself in these end days more, though, more so than any other time. We just look at the last generation since 1948. We have the Dead Sea Scrolls, which prove the Bible unequivocally correct, meaning the original, the original scrolls match our Bible today. There's no discrepancies. And when you go into detail how the Jewish people under the law or, or transcribe the scrolls, you'll see that there was no discrepancies. They were very, very meticulous by, by the way God told them to redo the scrolls. And the scroll of Isaiah in its totality matches ours. So the Dead Sea Scrolls. Israel becoming a nation in 1948. The, as we said many times, the shekel becoming the, the, the uh, currency of Israel again. 
Uh, Ezekiel 4 said May 14th, 1948, to the exact day Israel became a nation. And June 6th, 1967, to the exact day Israel got the, the entire city of uh, East Jerusalem back under that. So more and more things the Lord is showing himself exactly the way Daniel said in the prophet Daniel in the end times. Knowledge will become to and fro. Knowledge of the Lord. Everything is being revealed. We need to open our eyes. And some of this fake news and this fake church and these divisions are actually a blessing because people are starting to say, wait a minute, you've taken that way too far. I'm going to challenge that. I'm going to challenge that. that isn't, that's not right. I'm going to look in the Word of God to see if this is true or not. Remember what Jesus said, even the elect would be fooled if it were possible in the end day. Well, the elect cannot be fooled because they know the Word of God. And if you're elect, it's not based on your works, it's based on the condition of your heart. Do you love the Lord? Are you being obedient to the Lord? Are you getting to know Him? Are you having a personal relationship with Him? And the only way you can have a personal relationship with the Most High through Jesus Christ is to know Him. And to get to know Him, He's the living Word, is get in His Word. Pray, meditate, seek His face, and the Word will provide the only truth in this world of fake news, fake church, fake everything. God is waking people up and saying, search truth because of these divisions within these denominations. What are they doing it? They're seeking truth because they're saying, no way, I'm not buying into that anymore. I'm going to seek it for myself. And that's one of the things that we've always said about this minister, his glory. Not only is it for his glory and for his purpose and to glorify the, the name of the Most High, and it's, an about, it's about him, not man. But one of the uh, Bible verses that the Lord has put on our heart at his glory ministry is Acts 17.11. As Paul said, in the book of Acts, the Bereans were much more noble than the Thessalonians. Because why? Because they listened to this, what Paul was having to say with an open heart. No preconceived uh, uh, traditions or notions. They were listening to what he had to say because it was new news. It was the good news. It was the gospel. So they're not facing, they weren't waiting on traditions of the past of the law. They were listening to what he said with an open heart. But here's the key. They searched the scriptures daily to see what Paul was saying was truth or not. And that's what God is telling us today. Open our heart to listen for not man's tradition, not religion's tradition, but truth that can only come from the Word of God. Open your heart to that, but be as the Bereans. Search the Scriptures, the 66 books of Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Seek them daily to prove whether it's truth or not. Do not listen to man and seek the truth and the love that can only come through his holy book and through him and through the heart. We pray that this week in Bible prophecy has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you till next week. God bless.